a bloody war in the first uh, 10 years, uh, both at, at the domestic level and as well as there is the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, but in the first 10 years, it's clearly obvious that uh, there was a, a struggle for for democracy, for human rights, and uh, for Iran to go in a better direction. And on the other hand, we've seen in the first 10 years uh, a violent onslaught of opposition groups. And we have witnessed, and we, there are documents that in the first 10 years, uh, there were hundreds and thousands of people who were murdered, either um, in prisons or 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 in, in, in struggle uh, to, uh, to fight the regime. Uh, and the the, the, the first, this is the first phase, and the second phase uh, was the. Um, uh, it was marked by um, by uh, the coming of power of Rafsanjani, uh, becoming a, uh, portraying himself as a pragmatic pragmatic leader, and there was a lot of hopes that Iran could change uh, in the second term, in the second year, and then there was the Gulf War that uh, the first Gulf War that happened, the Saddam was removed, so uh, kind of it tipped the balance in Iran and in the region. Uh, Iran coming out as as a, as, a, as, a, as a, the only power uh, after uh, Saddam's uh, after uh, the first Gulf War that led to the weakening of Saddam's regime, but that also created vacuum in Iraqi Kurdistan. As you know, our party was staging a, a armed confrontation against the Iranian regime, and this was the only way to. Uh, as, as Carol was saying, that uh, we did not want to engage in armed struggle, but it was the only way to bring and, and get the regime to listen to you. And, and one of the reasons that the regime uh, at that time was, was willing to sit down with Qasem Lu was because he had the, the clout and he was forcing the regime to, to listen to him, and that was the only reason. Um, so on one hand, the, 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 it, was, it was a waged war against us, and it was an imposed war, but at the same time, it was, it was, a, it was a way to get the regime to listen to you. And they did, but again, the intentions weren't, uh, weren't, uh, weren't uh, uh, what they were supposed to, what, what Qasem Lu had hoped at that time. Uh, so the second phase, again, was the coming power of the Rafsanjani and also the, uh, <coughs> the uh, uh, eventually the, the reformist uh, uh, in the 1997. Uh, uh, so there were a lot of hopes for people in Iran and outside that the regime could change for better. The regime could be reformed, and uh, and this uh, went into the third phase of Iran. Uh, in the third phase, uh, we witnessed and people in Iran realized that the regime is not reformable. We cannot do uh, reform, or you cannot change the nature of this regime by simply changing pawns or figures within the regime. So there has to be meaningful uh, meaningful changes, and uh, people were quite frustrated with the with the reformist movement, and. Uh, and there was always uh, uh, quite a um, uh, contentions and confrontations between two sides. Uh, so we moved into the, uh, the third phase where that's when uh, the regime realized that the reformist movement and there was a lot of opposition to it. So they had to uh, retract and, and, uh, and uh, send the reformers back uh, to where they were in the first place. So Ahmadinejad came to power in 2005 and this changed the whole equation. But uh, the events that we're witnessing right now in 2009, following the elections, uh, had to do much, very much, with what has been going on in Iran the last 30 years. As I said, uh, the, there, there has always been uh, a will and a desire for meaningful regime change within Iran. And the people in Iran have realized that this regime is not reformable, so it has to be, has to be uh, changed so regime change has always been the the main theme of the Iranian opposition groups, including our party, uh, and this is the only way to uh, to accommodate the rights of the ethnic groups. This is the only way to respect human rights. This is the only way to coexist with the with the neighbors peacefully. Um, and the uh, the failure of the reformist movement to change the regime internally and to change its behavior failed. So people um, in the 2009. Uh, uh, following 2009 elections and the uh, the um, allegations of fraud, and uh, it was it was very clear that uh, people uh, were not accepting the results. And so at the beginning, it was mostly uh, the protests were were you know around where's my vote um, uh, and things like that. But eventually, as people were giving the time and uh, and there was no response from the regime. Uh, 
the clear demands of the people, of the protesters, uh, you know, was revealed, and that was uh, regime change as we witnessed in the protests and the slogans that were raised was mostly about uh, death to Khamenei, death to dictator, and this is still going on, and uh, despite a lot of uh, <coughs> uh, uh, indications that yes, the regime might uh, has been successful in, in suppressing this movement, but uh, the movement is quite alive, and it just has to wait for the right, for the right time and for the right moment. Um, so the Green Movement is not, a, is not a movement that came out of the election. So Green Movement has been, uh, this, this movement for democracy and freedom has been in Iran and quite alive and very much alive in the uh, areas uh, dominated by ethnic groups. As I said, our party was uh, quite uh, vigorous and quite uh, outspoken against the atrocities and the treatment of, of, of of, of uh, uh, respect for human rights and treatment of, uh, of ethnic groups. And there were other uh, movements in Iran as well, in like uh, countrywide and as well as in other areas, uh, demanding the same, uh, the same uh, changes. Uh, but the Green Movement uh, uh, wasn't, the, wasn't just born in 2009. Uh, the movement, yes, it, it, it changed color into green, but yes, uh, this meaningful, demands and, and desire for, for change and for democracy and for, for, uh, for respect for human rights were quite alive in the last 30 years and it still uh, <clears throat> it goes on. Um, and the, there's another aspect of, of, of uh, the, uh, the Green Movement and the kind of the attention that it got. Uh, we have to also look back at the international coverage of the event uh, and and in general, the international coverage of the events in, in central, uh, f you know, in, in general. Uh, so what goes on in Tehran, especially uh, since the reformers came uh, in 1990s uh, or even before, uh, gets more coverage than what goes on in other areas of, of, of belonging to ethnic groups. Um, for example, there has been a lot of uh, uh, demonstrations uh, in Iranian Kurdistan, white, very, uh, very strong demonstrations that uh, we've seen in Iran and Kurdistan, but they do not get the attention uh, due to the security and militarization of, of the region and the, due to lack of international press. In 2005, we had a very uh, wide, a very large protest uh, in major cities, in five, six cities, uh, that results in the death of, 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 of uh, hundreds of people and imprisonment of many, many. Uh, and, uh, uh, and even at that time, there was allegations by various uh, Kurdish uh, uh, activists that they were, uh, you know, they were, that they were raped. Uh, they were uh, uh, a very uh, unpleasant treatments of, of detainees. And these allegations were made in 2005, but there were really no one to hear these things. And when it was made in 2009 in Iran by uh, a, a reformist or, or someone who uh, who who is uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, leaders of the uh, of the uh, reformist movement, Karubi, it got a lot of attention. So what I'm trying to say is that, uh, is that the events and the, what's happening in the regions belonging to ethnic groups, especially Kurds, because of the heavy military due to lack of international press and international media gets little attention. And the events that, uh, that Carol mentioned, the, uh, uh, the general strike, it's a civil disobedience uh, to a, a way to fight the government, yes, if it's, if it, people protest in, in the in regions belonging to ethnic groups, there's most likely that uh, there'll be bloodshed and the uh, the crackdown will be much, much more rigorous than it is in the center because 